to the minutes. Again, welcome to the University of Utah. We are excited to, uh, to have some really good news today out of the stadium, so uh, welcome. Uh, I'm Chris Nelson, I'm the Communications Director. Uh, today you'll be hearing from President Ruth Watkins, uh, Athletics Director Mark Harlan, and Head Utah Football Coach Kyle Whittingham, in that order. Uh, they will go through their remarks, and then if you can save your questions for after, we'll do a, a Q&A at the after. And I know uh, Mark will be available to take some, some questions afterwards as well. I also want to let you know we have our uh, two consultants who did the feasibility study who are in the crowd today uh, from CSL Consulting and Populous Consulting. And uh, if you want to see me afterwards and have questions specifically around the feasibility study, we can facilitate those as well. Also, the renderings and the fly-through are available uh, here momentarily on the web at unews.utah.edu. So for media, if you need to download those and use those, you can get that information there as well, as well as a press release and uh, FAQ uh, for folks who have questions about that. Um, again, we are recording today, and we'll be, we're streaming this live on Facebook. We'll also post this back onto YouTube. So for media who have questions, uh, my colleague Liz Abel will have a mic, so we would just ask you to state your name, media affiliation, so that when people go back and watch this, uh, they can see that as well. Um, and then I think that is all the housekeeping items. So with that, I'll turn it over to President Watkins. Great. Thank you very much, Chris, and thank you all for joining us this morning. It's a pleasure to welcome you here. And also a pleasure to be joined by my colleagues, Athletic Director Mark Harlan, Coach Kyle Whittingham. Uh, Coach, we thank you for a great day Saturday, and we look forward to what's ahead. We appreciate your time this morning. So uh, Rice Eccles Stadium, a, a spectacular, iconic symbol for our community, not only for the University of Utah, but for Salt, Salt Lake City. Great history great success, remarkable things have happened here. The stadium serves as more than a home for athletics. It's a gathering place for our community and it serves many needs at the university and beyond. It convenes thousands of people every year around some of our shared missions and it's an exciting thing. It's also a very impressive place with a remarkable record. I understand that our football team has played uh, 56 consecutive sellout crowds here at Rice Eccles Stadium and there are about 3,000 people on a waiting list for season tickets which is a remarkable place to be. We think about the needs of this expansion. Today we get to talk about expanding to meet some of those needs and those interests. This is a multi-year process to create a resource for the University of Utah and for the Salt Lake City community for many, many current and future needs, and it's a very exciting day indeed. I want to express my confidence in Athletic Director Mark Harlan and his team for the work that they are doing. I know that they will work together and collectively with the community, with our campus, to create a facility that will be exciting and will meet our needs for a long time to come. So, Mark, I turn to you. Thank you, President Watkins. Truly appreciate that. I think before I uh, begin with my comments, we're going to go ahead and show a, a flyover video here. We're going to be distributing that video uh, all over, uh, probably as I speak. Well, thank you all for being here. I certainly want to start by thanking President Watkins and the Board of Trustees for their leadership, not only for this really important project, but really setting a great high bar for this department, which we appreciate. Today, we move forward with the South End Zone project, thereby expanding Rice-Eccles Stadium. 
Let me take a moment to acknowledge a few incredible people who helped get us here today. First of all, Vice President John Nixon, who I see back there, and his team and auxiliary services. Uh, they partnered with athletics to get us to this point today. John and his team oversee this stadium, and they take great pride in doing so, and we're very grateful. Thank you, John. Also, the senior staff in athletics has been so patient uh, with me and getting me up to speed on all the work that has been done on this project prior to my arrival this summer. Of course, the gentleman to my left and the incredible teams and young men that he's coached in the many years he's been here allow us to have the kind of momentum to allow us to do this project. Thank you, Whit. Appreciate it. And of course, Chris Hill, who I saw earlier today. Chris, can you just, there you are. There's that hand. You know, Chris did an amazing job with this. He initially hired two very elite stadium expansion feasibility firms, CSL and Populous, to conduct an in-depth analysis regarding the appetite of community sport for expansion, along with the quantity and the type of seating. Chris has done a fantastic job in pro providing me with all the necessary prep and data to study this project. He just handed the football right over to me. I'm very grateful, as is this department and university. Thank you, Chris. Appreciate it. Today has been a few years in the making. After Chris retained these outside consultants, the firms provided verifiable data that showed overwhelming community support for this expansion. Work then began on a design as well as a cost assessment for our needs. Working alongside our internal Utah facility team, the firm estimated an $80 million budget for this project. Some of the initial design work is what you are seeing here today. My arrival to Utah this summer coincided with the ongoing analysis of the very critical financial model. Working closely with many stakeholders, we finalized a very conservative path to achieve the project goals. The project financial model necessi ne necessitates us to raise $35 million in private philanthropy, and that, along with new revenue generated from the sale of premium standard seats, will be the primary driver to cover the costs of this project. The approval yesterday from our board to request non-state revenue bonds will be funded by athletic-related revenues. Now, I was adamant that we could only do this project the right way without jeopardizing the existing department funding model. What we found was an opportunity to not only repay the bonds while generating significant new revenue for our programs in the future. I was also very insistent that before moving forward, we were confident that the demand of additional seating was there and that we could continue to sell out Rice Eccles Stadium. This was very important. This new capacity of 51,444 will allow us to maintain and even improve upon the best home field advantage in college football, while also allowing even more of our passionate supporters to experience game day with us. The president mentioned our waiting list. It's growing every year. Students that graduate that are looking for seats, this will help us to get them into the stadium. And let me give you a few facts about the planned expansion. We will have both premium seating and bleacher seating as a part of the project. A thousand new bleacher seats will be added to the already 2,700 plus seats in the south end zone. All of the current seat holders in the south end zone will have the opportunity to remain in the section and join together with a new group of 1,000 rowdy Utes. The remaining new seats will be premium seating, which will include suites, outdoor loge seating, and rooftop terrace seating. There will also be club areas, including a field club, where the guys will run out right by the club, and ample space for social gatherings, with many having views of the field. Now, our research has shown a very high demand for these premium spaces. Pricing and other specific information, of course, will be refined and announced in the months ahead. All of the new seats, both premium and bleacher, will help us accommodate our ever-growing waiting list for these tickets. Now, in addition to the new seating, the South End Zone project will include brand new locker rooms in a new building set below the new seating. These new facilities will serve our football student athletes and coaches on game day to be, make sure they have the best in the nation. There will also be space for athletic training, equipment, and media. And yes, we will create a visiting team locker room that will show respect for our opponents' needs, although not as big as your locker room wit. We'll make sure we keep an eye on that. In closing, I wanna thank everyone who has worked so hard on making this needed project a reality, and I'm grateful in advance for those 
who will co contribute in, in, in the months ahead. This project will ensure the continued success of our football program and put them in a position to win championships. The new revenue generated from the expanding seating will also support all of our sport programs in their pursuits of excellence. So together, we will build something great for generations to come, and I want to thank everyone for being with us today and the help that we're going to need in the future. Thank you. Okay, well, first of all, I want to echo the, uh, the thanks and uh, you know, thank President Watkins, uh, Mark Harlan, uh, Dr. Chris Hill for getting the ball rolling on this project, and especially the donors. Many of, many of you are here today, and so uh, just making it a reality is, is huge for our program. Obviously, the football program is very excited about this project. Uh, it's going to help us on a lot of different levels. Uh, recruiting, you know, that's the name of the game, and it's going to be a great uh, selling point for our recruits to come in and see this, uh, you know, the finishing uh, touches, I guess you could say, on this stadium, and it's going to make a, an already uh, outstanding game day experience for the fans that much better. And so we're excited about it, and uh, it's uh, something that, uh, you know, our, our players are excited and, and uh, can't wait to, uh, you know, actually get to play in there in, in, uh, in the future. So uh, many thanks to all who are involved. Appreciate it. Thank you, Ed. Excellent. Uh, thank you. So uh, questions for media? Got a, time for a few here? Anyone? All right. Uh, Ryan Miller from KSL.com. Uh, Mark, how did you guys reach the 51,000 mark, and why, why did you guys feel comfortable with that? Well, this has been a data-driven um, decision-making process all along. CSL, who's, who Jay is here today, and you guys can speak to him, he surveyed their company, who I believe is the best in, in the country, if not the world, in these kind of projects, surveyed a broad base of our constituent base existing holders, folks that used to have tickets, single game buyers, alumni, et cetera. And I think at the end of the day, that, that, that sweet spot number between 50 and 54 became real clear right in there, along with a real desire for the kind of products that I mentioned earlier. But this was not us sitting around on, on a grease board, Dr. Hill and I, you know, in our transition meetings. This was all driven off of data and uh, using one of the best firms in the country to do so. All right. All right, thank you so much. We need we know we need to get uh, the coach and, and President Watkins back to work, and then Mark will stick around and, and take some questions offline if necessary. So thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you.